So just finished sending my first email of the morning off. Oh, been working on this three days in a row. Kind of it is impasse. Straight out of Springfield is my next wrap. So I'm working on that one right now. Grabbing me some gears. Ain't no, and I don't. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. There's your muffin. Well, thanks, buddy. That's awesome. Cool. We ready to get going? We don't even start that till like 11 o'clock. Why am I here? You, have, you want me coming early? Oh, egg and muffin. This is a little thing. This is something you want to learn when you go to McDonald's. Right? I love my McDonald's. I have an egg muffin every morning, 240 calories, throw half of the bun away. You go in there and they say, okay, that's one egg muffin. No, it's not an egg muffin. It's absolutely not an egg muffin. It's an egg McMuffin. Get a homie when you're but, ready. But I'll I get be out looking at Cindy's car. But I get hold of the lady when I get to the driveway and I play her game. I do a reverse on her. They're coming to This get week, you the mom. ghouls continue on the 1971 Inviolet Cuda Convertible while the metal work for our tribute, Christine, begins. And Tony D'Agostino helps Mark salvage a dilapidated 1970 Challenger convertible. We're coming back on the air. So the 71 CUDA convertible came to us a few years ago. The only reason in the world that I would rebuild the dash ourselves here is just time. I'll use Mike, I'll use instrument specialties every single day. I mean, he's done dozens and dozens and dozens of dashes for us. But this is a simple dash, it's a standard dash, it's not a rally instrument cluster. It was very complete, so it's just a matter of assembling it with our new parts from OER. Justin's been here a couple of years now. He came from a Mopar family, his dad's a Mopar nut. Justin grew up from the time he was a kid old enough to hold a tool, dad was working with him and teaching him. What I see here is he had the fundamental skills the mindset, the mentality, the aptitude, and now we're just dialing them in. It takes years to be able to get to that point. Well, I was real happy to see the paint on Cindy's car because we've been pushing Mark for a while. Everybody thinks because Mark and I are buds that you know I'm getting a royal treatment or something. No, I'm in line like everybody else. Cindy and I were out here a few years ago and we were just walking around the lot looking at the amazing amount of incredible cars that are here. And uh, Cindy saw this purple Challenger, and she loves purple, and she likes Challengers. Mark and I ended up making a deal for it, and Cindy was real happy, and now she's just been impatiently waiting. I got out of it, because she, she kept asking me so much, and I'd ask Mark, I said, here, just communicate with Mark and take me out of the middle. And she's gotten better results with getting stuff done than I have. The Tone Man! Last year when I was here, Mark had promised that the car would be painted when I would be here next. You know, while... I don't even want to say I was optimistic, I was just hoping. And I was very pleased to see that it is painted, and, and that was a good thing. Is it absolutely 100% supercalifragilisticexpialidocious? I'd like to see him. I, I, it isn't that I don't want to see him. I know he's annoying, he drives me a little bit crazy. The very East Coast is just different than us. We're very laid back and calm out here. They're very crazy back there, so I just have to acclimate myself to him. Almost. The ice man, the ice tray, the ice frame, ice skates. Blue ice, you know the stuff, the dry ice you put in? Right. But it'll keep, yeah, that kind of ice. While I was looking at the car, all I really saw that concerned me was there were some scratches in the paint finish. Then Mark says, well, I didn't paint it. Well, whoa, 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 what do you mean you didn't paint it? I didn't. So I got, I had, I got a picture of you painting it. Thing about Tony is he jumps to conclusions, right? Uh, yeah, I took a picture of me holding the paint gun next to his car, but it wasn't like I was trying to say, oh, I painted your car. Like, oh, look at me, everybody. I'm the best little painter in the world. No, I just, I was taking a picture to show him that there was progress on the car. So this car. This that, is just, this is, this, this, this is, that's normal for a pre-paint. Okay. That's why we pre-paint it, so the pre-paint will actually go into those little cross hatches. So you put this down, you long block it with 600, like a sheet of glass, like, you know what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. Who's gonna be painting? Is it gonna be you or is it what? Oh, I'll do the final paint, yeah. Oh. So Will did this. Yeah. Was it you? Never said it was. You sent me a picture of you doing it. If I take a picture of a guy laying on the ground in a pool of blood with a chalk outline and I got a 44 Magnum Auto Mag in my hand, doesn't mean I killed him. It means I'm trying to say, get me some help, this guy's dead. Even though Mark explained to me about the couple issues on the car, being that Will painted it and Will's really the painter, I'm gonna go talk to Will and get a more serious, straightforward answer, I hope.
Christine's ready to have some metal work done on it. I need to take a few minutes right now and work with George. He's been waiting patiently for me to do that. So Christine is about to get her new used floor section. So if you remember, this car had a lot of rust in the floors. The, from the rockers up, for the most part, it's pretty darn nice on it, but it's real rotten in the floors. So we bought a used floor section out of a four-door. You've seen us do floors before. Usually they're brand new floors, so it's a little bit different process where, in this case, we're putting the floors, the inner, the outer rockers, all in as one unit. We cut it high, we cut this one low. Once we have these two all collected and put together, pinch welds are all in place, we can raise the back up into place. When the back is raised up into place and we dial everything in, we can start welding. So that's what we're getting ready to do right now. Yeah, when I walked into the parts room for the first time, there was a lot more organization. They were all racks with the hardware, nuts, bolts, what have you like that. They were all labeled. So there's been some time and effort and thought put into it, making it uh, making it easy to get stuff, which it should be. Yeah, good to see organization and stock, so that way it doesn't hold up a job. Kill Cliff Endure. More parts back here, cool. All right, Adam and George are doing the welding now. Uh, I'm gonna cut them loose. They're gonna do the spot welding, plug welding, get everything in there solid where it needs to be. I'm gonna cut these guys loose. I'm gonna go back and do the rest of my job, change hats, go into quality control for the graveyard cars. And now! <laughs> more AMD stuff. I see they have a whole area of AMD stuff, which is sort of the lifeline for all these cars, because you know I used to get calls, oh, do you have a car with a good rear clip on it? There's no such thing, because if a car has a good rear clip, it's not gonna be taken apart. You know, that car is gonna get restored. Oh, cool, it's good to see they got the glass here in stock now. It's hard to get good used glass. You can't have a nice new shiny paint job and scratched up glass in the car. So I will say this, on, on the old cars, I love the thickness of the metal, the gauge of the metal. It allows you to be able to work it. It's malleable, it doesn't crack, it doesn't break. You can actually work it, shrink it, metal file it. So it's, it's going really well on Christine. I, I feel very optimistic that the necessary uh, deadlines that we have coming up are gonna be met. Yeah, Alyssa's really impressed me what she's done up here. It's, uh, it's better than I've ever seen it before. Oh, and here we got some good stuff here. This is Tony's Parts, so. Oh, and they got ECS uh, carpets. It's a good company. They make very accurate products. They're, they're shipped flat, so that way uh, there's no wrinkles in them. It was nice to see all the different product lines here. Like you have the Goodyear tires, and they're all together. Uh, same thing with the parts. There's an area for Tony's Parts stuff, and they're all, it's not all thrown in a pile. It's like a regular parts department, but the main thing is to be organized and know how much of each product you have so you know when to reorder, because if you don't know when you need to reorder, well then you're not really that well organized. What the? Got done looking at the parts room, now I'm gonna head downstairs and try to find Will and talk to him about it. any concerns I have with the uh, paint job on my car, because I'm still not confident with the response I got from Mark, if I can even decipher what he meant. All right, what I got here is our taillight assemblies for our 71 Cuda. So the 71 Cuda taillights, they're very similar to the 1970, except that they've taken the backup light and they put it into the housing itself. The opening where the taillight housings go, they're the same 70 to 71, but the lens and the bezels, they're different. So 71 also is the last year on the Barracuda for the flush mount side marker. Now, if you had a white billboard or a black billboard, then the side marker on the quarter panel was actually the same color as the billboard. We are on the very last stages of the metal work on Christine. A lot of welding, cutting, we got the floor section in, we got the trunk floor section in, wheelhouses in, everything is done except for 
This car came with a new old stock rear body panel. So the last thing we have to do is install it. On the edges from the factory, they had equipment that would get in there where there were two pieces of metal and they could spot weld it. Our spot welder doesn't do that, so I can't get it in there and do a spot weld. So on the outer edges where those metal areas are, we're gonna use panel bond adhesive. We'll clamp it down with vice grips. 24 hours from now, you couldn't get them apart if you wanted to. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Let's go put a car together. What's up, my man? Hey, how are you? Good to see, it's been a while. It has. How's the uh, life of being unpeered? What do you mean? You want your car cut and bombed. That bothered me. Yeah, Will has issue with me wanting the, uh, the paint job on Cindy's car to be, you know, super slick and shiny, which was not assembly line correct. I had a lot of respect for you. You know, you're Tony, number one Mopar right. guy. Then there's like Mark, and then right. all of a sudden you don't want your car original. I want it to look really good. Yeah, I know, I get it. But I was just. I, was I also don't that. want it painted five times, not four times even. Sometimes it happens. It happens See, over there not, in assembly. Not from Chrysler. What do you want? You know, if, if I wanted the car for like an OE judging type deal, sure, absolutely, we'll be right. We leave the orange peel in it. But this isn't that kind of car. Uh, I've been there, done that, and I just want something that I can enjoy more and use. And it's nice to have a, a great uh, paint job on the car. The 70 and the 71 side marker on the e-body, to me, is just the sexiest looking setup in the world. It has a reflective lens in it, but it also has a small light. It's not just a reflector, it's an actual side marker light. It's an interesting looking tail light. If I had to choose between the 70 and 71, I probably would go with the 70 only because Doug's Barracuda when we were kids. I love the tail lights, I love the running lamps, the park lamps up in the grill. But it's still a good looking tail light. I did notice some sand scratches though. All that'll be gone. That's you know just that. for, yeah. for pre-paint. We finish it off in uh, 220. Mm -hmm. And nobody paints over 220, but because it's a pre-paint, it's okay. Sure. So it'll shrink back into it and then we'll block it out with 320, wet sand the whole car with 600. Okay. So it'll be like a sheet of glass when I hand over it. But you don't want it to be too smooth or else it won't adhere though, 600 right? 600 you can do. Okay. <coughs> yeah, 600 would be just fine. Yeah, we'll talk with Will about the uh, sand scratches in the uh, paint. It was no problem, I mean, it's expected. They leave it like that because it's a little bit of a rougher sand when they do the pre-paint and that all goes away. It's just another step to ensure that your final product is gonna be good. And I have full confidence in Will's painting abilities. I mean proof speaks for itself all the cars here that I class. All right, so I got my front side marker. These ones basically go on the same way that the rear go in. So same thing, just kind of set it right in there. Set your bracket. There we go. Okay, after you get those on there, we can set our actual light indicator. So the panel bond adhesive that I'm talking about, it's great when you have an area that we can't get in and spot weld or plug weld. And because there's going to be an inconsistency in the heights of the metal, I put it on a little bit thick. If it squeezes out, that's fine. I just want to make sure that it's highs and lows for metal. It can be kind of like that. You want to make sure that it all gets filled up. How long has panel bond been around, boss? It's used a lot in the OEM world, so manufacturers use it and it's used a lot in the collision world. I was using it back in the collision days back in the late 90s, and I imagine it was around it's before that. It's handy stuff, isn't it? They use this very same product to glue quarter panels on cars in the factory and bedsides. Okay. Yeah, and when you see crash tests with this stuff, the car will just be wadded up mess of nothing, and that panel will not break loose, That's period. That's amazing stuff. Yeah, it is. But you have to have clean metal, it's got to have good grooves and, in it. And it's got to have a little bit of etching, so that grinding of the 80 grit I had you do will take care of that scuffing. So that's nice and thick there. Nothing you want to get on your hands, huh? Well, it's if you get it off while it's soft, it's fine. If you wait till later, yeah, you're not getting it off. <laughs> you have to sand it off. Yeah, I've been reviewing some of the episodes before the air. Right. And it seems like after all these years, you're still at a loss for paint coats. I have some of the important ones now. Right. But the things you're forgetting is, A, I'm not a Bopar guy. I just work for one. How long? How long have you been here again? Well, that's just a, that's a low blow, Tony. 
Will's been here for quite a few years now, and uh, I'm a little surprised that Will didn't have a better handle on uh, the paint codes. I mean, I know he doesn't know all the option codes for cars. I wouldn't expect him to, but being a painter and having dealt with all these colors for how many years it is now, you, you think he'd be able to rattle off the paint codes because that's that's his thing. He's a painter. Bahama yellow. Mm -hmm. That's an odd color. It's also called butterscotch, depending on Plymouth or Dodge. Yeah. But that code is, uh, I think it's EL5. I'm not sure, but I know it's EL. And that's a weird color because it first was used in, because of the E, 1969. And then it wasn't used in 70 and came back in 71. They skipped a year. There's, you know, citron yellow, there's yeah. regular yellow, yeah. you know. Um, it, there's all, you know, it's different variants of the Okay, so we'll just set this area up here first okay. on both sides. Ready? All right, looking good. So now we're ready to go up and do our spot weld. Oh, hey. So while I had some downtime, I went up to see Aaron and DL that are producers of the show. And DL wasn't around, but Aaron was there. It was good to see him. I mean, he's been here since the beginning, so I, I've known him for a good amount of time. Uh, they're the ones that I, I work with as far as uh, reviewing the episodes uh, before the air to see if there was anything that, that slipped by that shouldn't have. So what's that? Oh, this is episode one, actually. Oh, actually, I wanted you to watch this. So okay. uh, I'll set it up for you maybe in the conference room a little bit later. We definitely need you to comb through this one just to make sure details are correct and all that kind of stuff. And by the way, I appreciate you doing that. So oh, that no problem. I enjoy it. saved our butts a number of times. What I do as far as reviewing the episodes, I'll, I'll, get, uh, I'll get an invite to go look at an episode. If I see something that I feel isn't correct, I can actually stop it and type a note in saying, no, this is wrong, or no, it should have been like this, or you know, there's something here that's not right. Some of the mistakes that you run into is Mark will be talking and he'll misspeak about something. And nine out of 10 times, honestly, I mean, I, I bust on him about it, but nine out of 10 times, I know that he knows the right answer. But when you're in fr front of the camera and you're, you're trying to make everything flow, as you're saying, without any dead spots where you stop and think about something, and you're thinking a couple sentences ahead from where you're actually at, it, it's not that hard to make a mistake. Gosh, you know, one wrong word gets through and you get the keyboard commandos who go crazy. The internet. They're just sitting there on their phones, you know, like, you know, on Twitter or whatever it is, Facebook, and they're just waiting for like the one wrong word to come out of Mark's mouth. And you know, it's you just should, like, ah. You know, I always tell people it's not as easy as, as what you see uh, on TV. It's like, I remember the first couple times I was out here, uh, I was very stiff and I couldn't even say my name right. It, it, it's, it's, it's not as easy. I mean, it's, it's not acting per se where there's a script and maybe that's why it's harder because you're thinking of what you're saying as you're in front of the camera and you don't want to have any downtime so you're thinking two three sentences ahead and i could see it getting kooky like that so so right now i'm outside with george and we're getting ready to do the shrinking on the quarter panels these quarter panels are real long on the 58 plymouth they're long the metal is stretched almost four feet from the top to the bottom. So what tends to happen is an oil canning thing. Oil canning is just a term that we use because of the old oil cans. Remember the ones you'd turn upside down and make that sound? Sheet metal can do the exact same thing. It can make the same kind of a sound. That must be where it adopted its name from. If I'm saying a panel's oil canning, I mean that it's moving so much, it has so much metal there that needs to be shrunk because if I don't, and I go to sand it, when I'm sanding on it, the metal will push away from you and then come back out, push away and come back. I can't block something like that. It has to be solid. So we have to do the necessary shrinking. That's a matter of getting that metal hot, re liquefying it in a way, and then cooling it down. And when you do that, it tightens up tighter than it was before. So that's the process of trying to tighten up a panel and get rid of the oil can. So George is gonna be inside with the dolly. I'll be out here with the hammer and the torch. now. 
He's gonna be inside on the back side of this quarter where it's all oil canning. He's gonna look for the red glowing spot that I'm gonna create with our torch. Then I'm gonna come out on the outside here and start tapping down on this panel. This is gonna back it up because if this wasn't in there backing it up and that's glowing red, one hit and I'd have an inside dent, the shape of this hammer, game over. So whether you're using heat or not using heat, a dolly and hammer is a process of this. When you do that to the metal, it forces it all together and that shrinks it. That's why it's called a shrinking hammer. Okay. Try to get that area red. There it goes, getting red now. Come on. You up against it? Up against, go. In this case, it was really soft through there. So I had to take the torch and get it nice and hot glowing so those molecules are moving around. And then hit it with the cold air. And when you do that, like I say, it shrinks it back up again. But once that thing's actually shrunk down to where you can't push on it and you can see in that that it got a little more solid each time, it won't grow again. Now you look, see how stiff that's getting? It doesn't fall like it did. Yeah, we gotta get that shrunk. See how that no longer oil cans in? It's got some rigidity to it. If you don't take the, the extra metal out, if you try to straighten a panel, you can just pour Bondo on it, filler on it, until it finally bridges and it has a flat finish to it. But it won't stay, it'll crack back out again. That metal will continue to move every time you go over a bump. Remember, it's like that, you can see it in the picture. If it moves like that with your hand, it's gonna move like that going down the road. So if you're, gonna do, if you're going to do a proper repair, you have to shrink the metal in those areas. We are finished with all of our metal work, so we're really right now down to just working on the body, which is mud, 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 uh, fixing all the seams on it, fixing all the little rust pockets up at the top. Uh, with that, once we have the mud work done on it, we can send it over to Will, he can get the primer going on it, and we'll be able to start doing some paint work. Which is good, because I think we have like 45 days now until Christine has to be at the red carpet event on Monday night. The unburied dead are coming back to life. One of my clients has had a car here for a long time. 70 Challenger convertible. Tony's still here, so I want to use his brain and his expertise. And I want an honest, open opinion on the parts for this 70 Challenger convertible. Come in here and take a look at how the seat's leaning. That's why the seat's leaning. Huh. There's nothing there. Right. And, and I knew it was rusty when we took it on. It wasn't that. It's just I was more optimistic three years ago when it came in than I am today. I work on these every day and I know what goes into it. And at the end of the day, I can't even use the hinge pillar. It's rotten down at the bottom. So there's nothing to build off of. It's not like the Phantom Cuda that had some structure you could build off of. This is nothing. We know that the car isn't gonna make. I do owe it to the owner to go around the car one more time, try to come up with how much I think what is setting there is worth. Uh, I know he says it's a rough car, but still, it's an e-body convertible is the number one desirable type car. There's a pretty good amount of, I think, usable stuff, but that's why I wanted you to look at it and see what you thought. Coming from me, who may want to buy the car to be able to use the parts, might seem a little biased. So Tony, he can just throw his reputation out there and say, this fender is worth nothing. And, and he's got no dog in the race, right? He's just going to tell it the way it is. What do you have on your list? Well, I looked through the best I could, and it looked like the heater box. But what I saw through there, it did not look like it was broken out to me. It looked like right there where you put your foot. But you know, we can get that new piece. Yeah, but that's not the same. No, it's a different color, different everything. Yeah, I agree with that. That may have been cut back. There's something weird about it. Don't yeah. they turn down or something? There's They're supposed something. to have a little lip that curls up. Yeah, maybe and that lip is cut off. Right, that's what I'm saying. Okay. So it's a usable, but it's not me. It needs to have that other piece put on. It has some value because they do make the part that's bad on it, but it still needs to be restored. It's gonna, I'm sure it's gonna be rusty inside. How could it not? 150 bucks. And why'd you charge me 400 for the last two I bought? Because they were better. Okay. So the steering wheel horn. Steering that's wheel, I don't know if it'll clean up. You've cleaned up a lot more wheels. If that's, it's well, not cracked. It's not the, no, believe it or not, the wheel doesn't matter. 
because you can put that other piece on another wheel. No, I know, but I'm just wondering how the overall oh, shape of it is. The wheel is worthless. So the steering wheel itself is not anything special. It's not really in good shape, but it does have the partial horn ring, which is somewhat rare on the e-bodies to have that. So that has some value to it. How much money on the ring? How much on the wheel? 100 bucks. Complete steering column without the steering wheel. Complete power steering. Good, good, complete column. $175. You charged me $350 for the last one I bought. Stop. The dash is a standard non-rally dash. I don't put hardly any value on something like that. I never get calls for it. Think about it. There's a lot of stuff in there. Name it. Okay, you've got a complete non-rally instrument cluster that's complete with the knee bolsters or what you call the trims. Now the switch panel, the switch panel's no big deal, but the switches are worth something out of it. You know what I mean? And it's got the convertible switch and all oh, that that's stuff. Right. Yeah. right. And the convert and wiring for the... Uh, but the dash frame, the glove box door, the, the ashtray, all the things that are sometimes missing or damaged. I mean, I would have put three or $400 on a donor dash. I mean, that's what you'd charge me for one. I just wondered what... Mm. Real number. If the dash pad core is worth something, I guess you'd be generous and give 300 bucks for it. Yeah, but is that what you'd sell it to Mark Warman for? All right, so we just got our dash pad back in. It looks gorgeous. Um, I already got the speaker set in there. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead, I'm gonna take this over, I'm gonna set it on our skeleton uh, of the dash and then just make our connections. So I'm just gonna take our quick nut and put that right on there. There's 11 of these. Doesn't really matter which order you go in. Um, there's one screw hole and it actually, this is the only one that's gonna go through the actual pad itself. And it takes this little screw right here. It's got kind of a little shoulder on it. This is the original one off the dash, so. All right, and that's that. I got our glove box liner. Uh, these actually come in two different pieces, just it goes together with uh, these little four screws right here. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna set this in place. So there's six screws that hold these in. There's two on the top, two on the bottom, and then one on each side. The quarter glass different or just yes. the front glass? Yeah, both quarter glass is different too. The convertible stuff specifically on the car is good. Just say like the glass, the door and quarter glass, that's specific convertible stuff. But that has some, you know, some desirability. It's an original glass and also like the convertible tops around the well surround moldings. If this was a cleaned up set back at Tony's Parts and I called you and said, I need a pretty darn nice set of glass, non-tinted convertible 70 Challenger. 400 bucks. <sighs> yeah. It's the convertible pieces on this car that the value lies in. The great stainless, it's in nice shape. The convertible top mechanism, Tony's more optimistic than I am because he hasn't got to fix it. So the pump motor and the- So the pump, the lines are probably yeah. rotten. And the motor's not a high call item. Okay, so let me get convertible top mechanism. How much for the, the top frame? Yeah, the top well, frame. Well, one thing you'd have to check for sure, because this is where they all rot out on the, the header headers rotted on, on this one, it is. Well. It's usable. I mean, it's repairable, but it's a lot of work. Right. So, you know, retail, I would I would sell a convertible top frame, you know, for around two grand. The convertible top frame is a pretty good part also. Mark said it was rusty, and yeah, it's got some pitting to it, but I banged on it pretty good. I didn't have a hammer or a screwdriver, but I think that that's going to be better than what he thinks. To me, it's not worth nearly as much if I've got to spend 15 hours making a header for one. He's looking at it like, well, I could sell it to somebody with that damage, so I can see what he's saying about being more optimistic. But from Mark Warman having to put it on a car and use it and sell it and deliver it to somebody, I got, you got a lot of work on that. The last big one, I think, is up the stainless steel. Oh yeah, now, now this up here, this outer stuff alone, I get calls weekly on this. Wow, that would be the four piece set. Well, it's, yeah, four piece, yep. Um, and those being really nice, you'd probably have them polished and- get I don't have them, no, no, no. If I have them polished, then they go, oh, it's not just right. Let them polish. So my cost. I'd probably pay like 800 bucks for a set of them, so. So $1,000 would be probably realistic what I'd pay. You'd make a couple bones on a set. Well, I, I normally say this stuff for what I buy it for. Okay. All right, so I got the latch for our glove box compartment. Um, you're able to pull these things out pretty easy. You don't actually want to pry on the actual knob itself. If you do, you're just, it's just gonna break off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this on here first. All right, so when you actually got the latch mechanism in place, you can go ahead, you can set your 
set the knob. You should be able to press that right into place. There you go. You got a working glove box. So Justin grew up working on Mopars with his dad. Dad's a big Mopar nut. So he came in here with some skill sets. The radio's got these little locator pins right here so you know that you actually got it centered. Set it up in here. Set your bracket. And that's always to me what makes a really good employee is somebody who's trying to get a little bit better each day. And I'd put him in that category. There's actually two bolt holes. Set these. Those tight. These actually screw right into the radio housing itself. So it's pretty strong, so you're not actually screwing this into any plastic pieces. All right, and there we have it. Now there's the inside three pieces. Now the plastics don't matter, the eight pillars on the no, inside. No, you're talking about the latch the surrounds. Cor the corners on the inside here, they're metal. So you're talking about the Oh. The metal corners. Stamped metal. The cor it. And the center piece that runs across. Got okay. it. Okay. Yep. Uh, those three pieces also, that's probably 1300 Wow. Retail. Wow. Would that include the latches and receivers? No, no, no. No. And also these? the convertible visor and the convertible holder. Right. That right there. Well, I better write them down. I want to be fair to the guy. The visors and the brackets that mount the visors and the latches are all convertible specific. Now, the latches are made new. So there's not that much of a desirability on those, but the mounting brackets for the uh, visors aren't. And another part that's a convertible specific is the, uh, the rear view mirror mounting bracket, the vinyl cover for it, but the post and all, that's all convertible specific stuff. And there's desirability in that. Visors and brackets, 150 bucks to you. The convertible latches and receivers, they are making those now. Yeah, the, the latches are not that big a deal. Uh, but what should I put down? 100 bucks. Um, then you have the, uh, rear, view mirror. the rear view mirror and, and the uh, visor bracket that's specific on that. Another 150 bucks. And then the top of the uh, rear wheelhouses. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a tangible piece. Nobody yeah. makes it. Right, that, you know. Yeah, and I, when I was looking at them, I thought those looked pretty decent considering the rest of the car is so rusty. Yeah, isn't it weird? I know, it, they should just be completely gone, but they're actually, well, there's some rust back there, but it's not bad. It's, it's these caps. Yeah, that, it's the caps that are so hard to get like right, that. Yep. Because it needs room for the convertible top to rest here. Yep. So they cut down the top of the wheel well. Well, then you could probably sell that too, right? I mean, if yeah, that doesn't seem to be like a, a coal. Doesn't item, rot though. very often. Yeah. But if you were going to make a convertible yeah. out of a hard top, you right. would need that. Yeah. Which would be kind of cool. Yeah. So the, wheelhouse tops. I mean, God, maybe three hundred bucks for a pair of those or something. Yeah. Go find them somewhere. Right. Like exactly. That. Yeah. yeah. Fuel door, screw on fuel door. He wanted me to write that and down. The gas cap? The, the gas cap. Nothing. I mean, $25 25 or bucks, something. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Outside door handles. This one's in really nice shape. I know they make the new ones now, so is it safe? I sell thing? NOS pair for $165. So it's well, worth 50 bucks for a pair of used ones, maybe? 25 You're never going to sell them. You're never going to use them. What, do you, what would you use it on? What would you... You couldn't put it on a car that just had a new paint job. No, no, that's true. What are you gonna have a used car that you need to put one on that you don't have a hundred others that you took off other cars to put new ones on? Three speed wiper motor. Uh, the course at 50, 75 dollars. Okay. Engine and transmission, 318. What's scrap today? Yeah. Eight and three quarter housing with axles. Okay. Pumpkin's probably open, so. Oh, sure it's open. 150 bucks for you. You know, it's like when it's you buy- It's a nice it. mirror. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a used original mirror. I yeah. know they're making. Are you making the? You no, make, I don't no. make new mirrors. But there's the, the three companies that make new mirrors. You know, fifty bucks. What's that date code right there? I know you know that stuff. I know it's sixty nine. Seventh bad. month of sixty nine. Seven of sixty nine. Which is weird on a four of seventy car. Yeah, a little early for the car. I think that thing's worth fifty bucks. Well, with the yeah. glass, I mean, it's not all fogged yeah. out and terrible. So. Yeah. Now, um, that's a pretty good hood. I looked at it the other day when I was walking around it. It's a flat hood, which they're making into the shakers. Not anymore, because they make the shake, but you can buy the hood now from AMD. Yeah, well. So, I mean, by the time you buy the stuff to convert it, you're at the new hood. When you're buying a package deal, you can only buy what you're going to buy. You can't put values on things like, oh, here's a fender. It's rusted out, but it could be fixed. 
No, it's, you wouldn't buy it ever. So right. you can't be forced to put a value on something. Mark knows body and paint and you know restoring the cars. He's not really in the parts business, doesn't have the experience with that that I do, just like I don't know the body and paint stuff like he does. He may be getting more excited about things that, that he shouldn't, you know, just from lack of experience. One thing that I've always done since I started my business was I try to resolve in favor of the customer. I always just felt like do what your heart says. And then you got to disassemble the car too. There's money in that. You're not buying the part from me. It comes in a package. Right. No, now you got to use labor to take the part. So there's got to be some gimmies on the car to cover you. You know. Got it. Go ahead. I'll set this bottom one. We decided we'd do the dash, the instrument panel ourselves. Instrument Specialties is still number one in the world. They do 99% of our stuff, but the thing is, we have so many dashes back there with them and we're so far behind here. This was a good, clean, original dash where we were able to replace parts on it from OER versus sending it out and having everything reconditioned. So after you get that in, you can actually grab your bezel, just kind of rock that over, make sure you're aligned correctly. In a perfect world, I would love to just never have to do a dash here, but once in a while you do, especially if you want to keep your promises to your customers and get them done. The end results are the same, it's just a lot less work if I have to sublet it out to our friends out there. All right. The front balance, I looked at it the other day and it was pretty darn nice. That's a good original piece. But the aftermarket fits really nice too. So you're in that market too. I think a new one's like a hundred and a quarter or something, a hundred and a half. So this yeah. one you gotta have stripped and, and then you gotta go over it for body work. It's just one of those parts. How about the license plate mounting bracket? Just gotta yeah, be, that's, you know. Maybe put a hundred bucks on the balance and the. That, and, and then you got the bumper brackets, you know. When I first started restoring cars 20 years ago, just more as a hobby, there wasn't anything being reproduced. So when you see a heater box, and if it wasn't smashed into 100 pieces, that was gold. I just have a hard time stepping away from that mentality. I've got to shed some of that. So I have some growing to do in that area. A good, honest, fair answer is, I still have a little bit of that save everything because you don't have much money to spend. Okay, I got to hold it because there's no hinges. There is an umbrella. And it's, look, this has the later fenders too. Oh yeah, it will be in uh, April. This is that stuff you say, that's your salt, that's your gravy for buying a car and disassembling yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you got yeah, some pieces yeah, you need. You know, the three speed wiper linkage, you know, there's some value in that, you know. Where we could have a potential of more than the average guy is that sometimes we have a cowl panel that's rotten, but for whatever reason, maybe this little piece of the cowl panel's okay. And yeah. so, you know, that's one yeah. of the things I can have out of a parts car. Maybe I need this little piece right here Right. Now, what is this worth? If we talked about that, the whole thing's rotten except from here down. Now, oh, okay. you got to put a value on that somewhere, right? You well, could, hey, look, they don't make convertible quarters now. You could, you could hey, come. Mark. No, they don't. So, just say you bought the new convertible quarter. I mean, you quarter. bought the regular they don't make quarters. Car, they don't make convertible quarters, so. You'd marry it with this probably on that hip line if these are good here. And they, you know. even if not, you'd still section right, this part exactly. in right here. Yeah. Okay, outside door handles, nothing. Outside mirror, nothing. Heat frame, nothing. Heat box. Left hand door, right hand door. We talked about the guts out of all those. Wheels, convertible trim. K member is the exact same as a 383 K member would be in that year. Yeah, this is this does not have a front sway bar. Right. So, and the suspension is the same as any B body, 72 and back. So, so if it were me, I, I think I would probably just try to recuperate my money. I, I would either sell it to me for the fair price that I think, or put it on eBay and maybe try to get a little bit more for it. But I, I wouldn't ship it home and then have him take his weekends and his evenings picking it apart. It's just not worth it. He's got bigger things to do. So I guess if I were him and I was standing in his exact shoes, I'd probably try to grind Mark Warman for as much as I can get out of him and walk away. Okay, Mr. Sarcasm. What would you give me for that uh, spare tire? Nothing, but the jack hook would have been worth something except for I came out. <laughs> Tony's with making these now, so they're not worth the much. No mast. Usually the spring's left in there. 
tire irons there and the hook but yeah there's just not a lot of original trunk mat yeah okay i think it looks spoiler cutouts this just had both uh -huh. type this had both type cutout because it was later in the year so early one they just have the ones for the go wing and then a little bit later when they knew they were doing the aer they put those in but they didn't get rid of those except for this would be a ta yeah it would be a ta there's no aer challenger no no However, that's speaking of bad. that. That's pretty bad, huh? Yeah, you have to stoop to that level. Sad. Now we can put our control uh, panel right in here. Um, it's all in one piece. So in, in the case of this car, you have your, your headlights, your wipers, your dimmer switch, and in this car, we got the convertible top. So you got your, your up and down switch for your top. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna put this in. I'm gonna follow that up with our dash lights. We did the dash ourselves, the instrumentation, the switch panel. We reconditioned everything. We put a new wiring harness, under dash wire harness in it, the heater box unit, put all the correct stamping and everything back on that, an overhaul kit in it, putting new gaskets and foams, new heater core. I had Mike out of Instrument Specialty send me some of the, uh, I think it's called Black Jewel suede dash paint in the original nitrocellulose lacquer with the suede on it. So that looked really perfect too. So it's a very nice looking OEM dash going in that car. Go to that middle one. There we have it. 1971 Plymouth Barracuda convertible dash finished. Looks great. All right, we got everything that we're gonna need here, buddy. I mean, a lot of the stuff racks up, but yeah. if a guy bought the car for five, if I just sent him a check for five grand, that's, that's a buy, right? For me, is that is that not fair to him, do you think? When you run all those numbers together just off the top of your head? Or do you think that's too much? I think that's too much. Oh. Add up where your numbers are at and just see what it comes out. Sometimes you get surprised at, at how, how little it, it keeps racking up, right. right? You know? Well, geez, just between, I mean, I think. Yeah, that, that, that the convertible top stuff. Right, is, that's really what the money is. But do you agree, sadly, with me overall, that it's just, it's done? Okay. The funeral march? The car yes is done. and no. I agree with you, the car is done. But if it was mine, I would clean it up the best I could, empty out all the junk, take off all the vinyl off the top, list it, and see if some lunatic. I think he could do it. I mean, be honest, every frame rail is bad. The torsion bar course is bad. People this, draw an invisible line in their head that it's a done, that... Or maybe somebody wants to convert a hard top and this is their answer. That would be their answer. You know, a so... A rotten convertible. Yes. I go, I don't believe this car is restorable. You might, you know, I mean... You get guys with stars in their eyes and you can tell them that it needs a paint job all day long. But if they look at it on eBay and they think, yeah, I could buff it out, that's his decision. Yeah. You didn't say anything, so that's what we're kind of counting on. That's really how I would go about selling this car. Put a car out for sale that I really feel should be parted out, but let me give it a chance first, you know? Yeah. Let me save maybe another car. Yeah. So I put it out for sale. If it sells, fine. If not, I take it apart. Then people have to go, oh, why'd you take it apart? Yeah. Well, I can try to sell it. So. It's a no-win situation. We had a good time going around the car, and I think that we had a good, honest feedback for the client. To me, that's the most important thing. So Tony helped a great deal with that, and it, and it was a nice moment for us. All right. Well, I guess at the end of the day, we did our job, right? That's all we could do. It's just sad because that's only like the second one I've ever had to knock in the head. But who are you going to do a justice to? Sometimes you got to. But that's what I would do with that. You hungry?